London is one of the world's largest cities. With a population of nearly 10 million people, London covers a massive area of over 600 square miles. Having so much area and such a large population means that traveling from one end of the city to another will take a massive amount of time. London's infrastructure is largely outdated, and many attempts at modernizing it have ended in failure. But soon, the new Elizabeth Line will allow fast transportation through London, but this massive railway came along with a slew of issues, and a hefty price tag, forcing it over budget. So where does the rail line stand today, and was London's $25 billion investment really worthwhile? This is the Elizabeth Line, also referred to as Crossrail. London's ambitious plan to build 62 miles of rail line, with a goal of easing congestion surrounding the capital. In the works for nearly 25 years, Crossrail had planned to provide fast transportation for London's population by connecting two existing railways in the capital. Development plans were so ambitious that it had even planned to have the rail line operating up to 24 trains per hour. While the ambitious plan seemed great from the drawing board, it would take the government nearly four decades just to come up with a feasible plan to get the development off the ground. The development's goal was simple connect London's Great Western Main Line and the Great Eastern Main Line using a railroad tunnel system. The project had a goal at providing high-speed transportation to ease traffic congestion, but building the rail line would not be as simple as developers anticipated, and the first plans for the massive development never materialized. Crossrail had planned to be built directly through central London, which meant that it would need to consist of underground tunnels, 42 kilometers of underground tunnels to be exact and this reshaped Crossrail from being described as a small regional project into the largest infrastructure development Europe has ever seen. But it would take the government longer than expected to actually pick up speed, since developing such a complex rail line was harder than they had first expected. In 1989, plans were proposed to build a series of tunnels underground to connect their existing rail network to the new line they were planning to build. In preparation for Crossrail, the government invested more than 1.5 billion US dollars to improve stations and tracks on existing rail lines that they had hoped would connect to Crossrail. Plans also featured nine new train stations to be built across London to connect each rail line. While plans for the development seemed promising in fixing London's congested rail lines, it would take the government another 12 years just to develop a feasible plan to launch the project. Following years of planning, in 2001 the government formed the Cross London Rail Link, a joint venture between the Department of Transportation and the Transport for London organization. And finally, after years of debates and proposals, the Crossrail Act of 2008 was passed, giving Cross London Rail Links the powers necessary to complete the project. Following the approval, banks were ushered in to fund the first phases of the project, which were set to cost 23 billion US dollars at the time. When developers first conceived the project, they underestimated the vast scale of the development and the condition of some of the existing infrastructure they had planned to use. For one, Crossrail didn't intend on using the existing trains on London's rail lines. They would instead develop a new state-of-the-art train that would be used specifically for the Elizabeth Line. A fleet of 70 new Class 345 trains debuted in 2017, the powerful trains were capable of carrying up to 1,500 passengers at speeds up to 90 miles per hour. Since the railway was directly under central London, twin tunnels were planned to be built to support the trains, set to be 20 feet in diameter and 130 feet below the surface. The incredible tunnels are able to weave around buildings, foundations, utilities, and other underground obstacles with incredible precision and accuracy. Digging took place between 2012 and 2015, and as of today, the entire rail line is completely dug out, and it just needs to be lined with track to be completed. As the targeted date of 2018 inched closer, it became apparent that the project was just too large to be completed in this short of a time frame but London's leaders were frustrated as the progress slowed down and the budget went up. As of writing this video, the only rail lines that stand completed are between Liverpool Street and Shenfield, and recently, in October of 2021, Abbey Wood Station was officially integrated into the entire rail system. While everything we've seen so far paints the picture that Crossrail was a failure, it's slowly inching toward completion. Recent reports by the developers have stated that large portions of the rail line should be ready sometime in 2022, 
and according to this map provided by the developers, there was only a small section left to connect the entire rail line, stretching from Reading to Shenfield. The entire project is now slated for completion in May of 2023, which includes every rail line tunnel connected in the development. While the completion dates have been proposed and delayed in the past, I have a lot of confidence that the 2023 completion date will actually bring the project to a reality based on how much of the development is completed so far. Five years after Crossrail's expected completion date and nearly $6 billion over budget, the development may appear to be somewhat of an engineering failure. But in reality, Crossrail is an incredible project and is one of a kind for the United Kingdom and will plan to transform London's antiquated rail lines into a modern-day transportation system. When Crossrail is completed, it will be a staple in London's history as one of the largest infrastructure projects to ever take shape in Europe, and one of the most unique at the same time. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching.